Hi everyone. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how we can do some mathematical modeling using Microsoft Excel. So the question we're looking at here, it's the one from class today. Kerry is planning to go to France. She's learning French online. After two weeks, she has learned 50 words. After four weeks, she knows 95 words. We've been told to use a logarithmic model to find out how long it takes her to learn a basic vocabulary of 500 words. Now, this is the way I've approached this. This is my logarithmic model here. So this is the base function y equals the ln of x, and I have four possible parameters, a, b, c, and d, and the value of these uh, a, b, and c, d constants is going to change the shape and location of my basic y equals ln of x graph, uh, and hopefully match the data points. I've already started to set this up here. I've included the two data points that we were given. Two weeks, she's learnt 50 words. Four weeks, she's learnt 95 words. I have included here uh, a zero point, assuming, of course, that before she started this online course, she knew no French. So that gives me three data points here to work with, which I've already set up a scatter chart here to do this. So time in weeks across the bottom, number of words learnt. And this is the, uh, the scenario for Kerry. So what am I going to do? Well, first I'm going to have to guess some numbers for A, B, C and D. And without really thinking about it at all, I'm just going to give them all the value of 1. And then I'm going to have to create a formula in this cell here which captures this equation. So we can see it's A multiplied by. Now, I will start a formula with an equals then A is the number stored in that cell. Hit F4 to make it an absolute reference. Multiplied by, we type LN in Excel for a natural log. Then we're up to B, which is cell I4. Again, absolute reference. Now we multiply by X. X is the time variable, and X for this particular formula is stored in cell A2. I won't put absolute references there. As I copy this down, I want that one to update to A3, then A4, and so on. Now I'm up to plus C, which is this one. Again, C is a constant, so fix the reference, close my brackets, plus D, and again, that's a fixed value. Now my model is doing a very bad job at the moment. It's predicting the data point was observed to be zero, assumed to be zero, and my model is predicting a value of one. Not a very good prediction. And if I copy them down, we'll see that these are even worse. Now, I could start changing these things a bit. I could go, you know what, I don't think the value of this equation is rising, and I've, I've plotted these ones here as this little orange line. So I need to make this rise a bit faster. I might increase the value of A. Let's increase that to 50. Well, it's rising a bit faster now. Um, I'm not suggesting it's anywhere near a good enough model to use yet, but you get the idea. If I change the value of B, what if I change that to 0.5? Uh, that's had the opposite effect. Maybe I should increase that to 100. You see what I'm getting at. We can play with C. Perhaps C should be 2. Well, that didn't seem to help. Maybe C should be 0. Well, that definitely didn't help. Put C back to 1 where it was. Uh, if I had C equals zero, did you notice I got a numeric error up here, a calculation error? That's a sure sign that C shouldn't be zero. Let's think for a minute why that would be. Well, time is zero. If any number times X of zero would be zero, plus another zero, I'm taking the natural log of zero. That's why I got a numeric error. So we better not make C zero. And let's just leave that for the way it is at the moment. Now. Residuals. Residuals are the difference between the observed data point and the model. It is literally a subtraction. It is the observed data value subtract the prediction of the model. In the first data point, my residual, my model, is one point or one unit lower than the observation. If I copy down, my model is 20 units lower than observed, and this one, it's 15 units why is that saying it should be, it's data minus model. Oh, uh, yeah, they're higher. What was I saying? Yeah, 
the little orange line is higher. That's okay. Now, sometimes residuals, if a model is good, residuals should be small and they should be sometimes above, sometimes below. Now, we square the residuals to take care of any signs. So by squaring the residuals, they get bigger, of course, but they're all positive. And what I'm really interested in is the sum of the residuals. Now, I should say three data points is a ridiculously small number of data points to be working with to create a model. But here it is, my sum of the squared residuals. Let's call that the sum of the squared residuals. Sometimes it's called the residual sum squared. Whoops, I forgot to put an equal sign there. So that's just a label. I really want that number to be as small as possible. And how do I change the size of that number? I change these numbers over here. What if I made that 0.55? It got worse. What if I make it 0.45? It got better. So I'm going to use this number here as a, uh, a an indicator of the quality of my model, my orange line matching the data points. Now I could he sit here randomly changing these numbers for a very long time, or I could use the Solver app, which is part of the data ribbon in Excel. Now you have to set a few things up. We start off by saying which uh, this is set which the objective. The objective is this cell that we were talking about. So I'll just uh, not sure. I'll put that cell there. I want it to be minimised. And which cells am I going to be changing? Let's just make sure that Excel knows to just change these values. And now I hit solve. And it makes a lovely noise and tells me it has converged to a solution. You see the value of the residuals now? 0 0.002. Uh, these are the numbers that Excel has found. And let's take a look at the data. When a data point observed was zero, the model is very close to zero. Very close to 50, very close to 45. Now, there's no reason we have to stop there. We can run Solver again with these as the starting parameters. And Solver, once again, we get that lovely sound. It Look at the size of these now. It's much, much smaller. It's used the initial solution and refined it by doing more iterations. Uh, and now look at how close these numbers are to the observed data points. I don't think I'm going to get significantly better than that, so I'm going to stop there. That's my model. Those numbers for A, B, C, and it turned out D was a zero. That's okay. For A, B, C, and D, that's a D is, if you like, a, a, a dummy parameter, or a, use, a wasted parameter. Uh, and we would then have our formula, y, or the number of books learnt, equals 450.32 times the ln of 0 0.0587 times t for the horizontal variable plus, point, no, 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 plus, plus 1, effectively plus 1. So there's our model. Now how can I use this model? Well, now that I'm happy that that's a good quality fit to those observed data points, there's no reason I can't extend the time values. Let's just add in a few more of those. There's no reason I can't extend the model. Now I've already set this to be graphing anywhere in these uh, that block there. So it, it's, ex it's extrapolated by model. If I want to answer this question about learning 500 words, well, I'm going to have to run across here approximate where that lands and then come, to, I think it's just a smidge under 35, it's close enough to 35 weeks. In fact, I could play around with this, couldn't I? I could put 35, I'll put 40 there so the graph continues. Look how close that is there. 35, 502, just a smidge under. Let's try 34.9. Oh, that didn't make much difference. Let's try 34. Oh, that's a bit too short. Let's try 34.5. Now, wait a minute. Aren't I iteratively homing in on a solution here by changing that cell and looking for a target value in that cell? Couldn't I use Solver to do this for me? Wouldn't I want to set 
my that's my objective now this time I want to set it to a value of 500 by changing just the value stored in cell A8. Let's run that. Oh, I love that sound. There it is. After 34.66 weeks, Kerry has learnt pretty close to 500 words. And of course, we'd have to consider all the limitations of this model because we have had three data points captured over only four weeks and we have extrapolated this thing out to almost 35 weeks, roughly nine times further than we've observed. This is not a great piece of science, but it's a demonstration of how we can use math, um, Microsoft Excel to do some mathematical modeling. And remember, with any model, the, the results that you generate from the model are only as good as the data set and observations that you started to build the model with. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks for watching.